fascinating case I had recently was a homicide in which a victim had been strangled to death. The suspects had taken a pair of shoelaces and wrapped them around her neck, uh, basically choking her to death. When the evidence came into the laboratory, I had the known blood samples from the suspects as well as the victim, and I had the shoelaces. There was no blood on these shoelaces. Again, we were looking strictly for touch DNA. I used PCR analysis, and I was able to generate a profile in which it was a mixture of all three of them, both suspects as well as the victim, and basically it was a slam dunk for the prosecution. Before this process came online, we would have to have very fresh DNA and it'd have to be a very large sample. Now, I can generate a DNA profile using PCR from basically a sample that has been touched. What's commonly known as DNA fingerprinting is a comparison of the polymorphic DNA found in two samples. Polymorphic regions of the chromosome are those that vary widely between individuals. They fall into two categories, short tandem repeats, or STRs, and variable number tandem repeats, or VNTRs. STRs consist of a pattern of two to four nucleotides, typically repeated five to 100 times down the strand of DNA. VNTRs are similar, except that the repeated pattern is much longer, 15 to 70 base pairs. Everyone has the same STRs and VNTRs. What distinguishes individuals is the number of times each pattern is repeated. The problem for law enforcement has always been obtaining a large enough sample to create a profile. PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction, is a method of amplifying polymorphic regions of a chromosome to supply a larger sample for analysis. First, the original sample, called the template, is heated until the strands separate. This is called denaturation. The second step is known as annealing. The sample is cooled to allow two synthetic oligonucleotides, referred to as primers, to attach to the two separated strands. Next, the temperature is raised again, and an enzyme called TAC polymerase adds nucleotides to the primers. The result is two separate strands of DNA made from one original. As these three steps are repeated, the number of new strands of identical DNA increases exponentially. One type of VNTR commonly used to compare genetic fingerprints is the D1S80 polymorphic region found on the first chromosome. By isolating the DNA of several people and amplifying the D1S80 polymorphism, it's possible to compare each participant's unique genetic signature. To begin, cells must be collected from the subjects. One simple way of obtaining cells is from eyebrow hairs. Pluck three or four that contain a sheath, a barrel-like structure that surrounds the base of the hair. Sheaths are often white. Place the hairs in the bottom of a 1.5 milliliter screw top tube. Obtain a lysis solution and mix it by pipetting it up and down. This solution contains hydrochloric acid to adjust pH, protonese K to digest proteins, and a chelating agent to remove magnesium. Without allowing the solution to settle, pipette 150 milliliters and add it to the hair. Make sure the hair is completely submerged. Heat the tube in a 56 degree water bath for 15 minutes. Remove it, let it cool for 30 seconds, and vortex it. Place the tube in a float and boil it for 10 minutes. This will break down the cells, but leave the DNA intact. Cool the tube on ice for 2 minutes, then vortex it for 10 seconds, and let it stand for 3 minutes to allow the chelating agent to settle. Carefully remove 50 microliters of the DNA supernatant to a fresh tube and ice it until you're prepared for the next step. Obtain a tube containing TAC polymerase, the four nucleotides, and buffer. Add to that the D1S80 primer and your cell DNA supernatant. Gently mix the solution 
and then micro centrifuge it for 10 or 20 seconds at high speed. The polymerase chain reaction takes place in a thermocycler. Initially, the tube will be heated to 94 degrees for 5 minutes. It will then be run through 32 cycles of 94, 65, and 72 degrees, each lasting 30 seconds. Finally, the tube will stay at 72 degrees for 4 minutes. To isolate the polymorphic region, a process called electrophoresis is required. Agarose gel electrophoresis is a common method of isolating regions of DNA. A gel tray is prepared with DNA samples placed in wells along one side. DNA molecules have a strong negative charge, so if an electric field is applied to the tray, they will move towards the positive electrode. Agarose gels have microscopic pores, which act as a filter when molecules attempt to move through them. Smaller molecules will move through the gel more quickly than larger molecules. Therefore, if the electric field is applied for a given amount of time, the molecules will arrange themselves by size on the tray. Those closest to the positive electrode are the smallest, and those farthest away are the largest. To prepare the gel, combine buffer, water, and agarose powder in a flask. Swirl to disperse the clumps. Boil the mixture to dissolve the powder, stirring occasionally. It should become clear like water. Cool the solution to 55 degrees and add distilled water to compensate for any evaporation that may have occurred. To prepare the gel bed, first close off the open ends using rubber dams. Make sure that the bed is clean and dry. Place a well former template, known as a comb, in the first set of notches nearest the end of the gel bed. Make sure it's on a level surface and pour the auger solution into it. Allow 20 minutes for it to solidify. It should be firm and cool to the touch. Once the gel is solidified, carefully and slowly remove the rubber dams and comb. Place the gel bed into the electrophoresis chamber, centered and level on the platform. Fill the chamber with diluted buffer. This type of gel is often called a submarine gel because it's submerged under a buffer. The sample should be heated to 65 degrees before loading to break down any unwanted aggregates. To prepare the sample for placement in the gel, mix it with 5 microliters of gel loading solution. Then load it into a sample well, taking care not to tear the gel. Snap down the covers of the positive and negative electrode terminals and make sure they're properly oriented. Connect them to the power source and run the electrophoresis for a time specified by your instructor. Bubbles should form on the electrodes if the current is flowing. Allow the tracking die to migrate at least 4 centimeters to allow the DNA bands to separate. Once the electrophoresis is done, turn off the power, unplug the electrodes, and remove the cover. To make the isolation more apparent, stain the gel for transillumination. When it's ready, take it to a transilluminator to view the bands. When struck with the ultraviolet light of the transilluminator, the dye in the samples will luminesce. You should be able to see a band of the D1S80 polymorphic region having traveled partway through the gel. How far it travels depends on how large the region is for each individual. The development of the polymerase chain reaction was a turning point in genetic science. Far beyond simply facilitating DNA fingerprinting, it has revolutionized as diverse fields as medicine, evolutionary biology, genealogy, and agriculture. It will no doubt prove instrumental to further developments in biological technology.